Today's video was made possible by WorkSharp. Welcome back to the shop, friends. I just finished this French cleat sharpening station. And today I'm going to show you the full build start to finish. If you're new here, my name is Jim and welcome to my channel. I make videos to educate you, to motivate you, and to inspire you for your next woodworking project. So this is my roughly drawn plans for the project. We're going to start out by cutting the main carcass using three quarter inch plywood. So at my local home center, I got the two foot by four foot pieces of birch plywood. I'm gonna go ahead and rip them to size on the table saw and then cut them down to the right length on the miter saw. So I've gotten the four pieces of plywood cut with a table saw to width for the outer carcass of the cabinet. So now I need to turn my attention to the shelves. They actually need to be a half inch less in width. That way I can inset the back of the cabinet. So once I get the width established with the table saw, then we'll head over to the miter saw and get them cut to length. So now I'm ready to cut the rabbits on each corner of the cabinet. I've got a three quarter inch straight bit that is a quarter inch off of the tabletop and the, the bit is flush against the, the fence. That will create a rabbit that is a quarter inch deep and three quarter inch wide. So I just dry fit the outer walls of the cabinet. It fits really well. It's measuring two foot wide by two foot tall. So I've got some half inch plywood that I'm gonna use for the back of the cabinet and I wanna recess that into the walls of the cabinet. So I'm gonna go ahead and use the same rabbit setup on the router table and we'll go ahead and cut that rabbit around the periphery of the cabinet. Okay, so now you can see that rabbit that goes around the walls of the cabinet. I did make one silly mistake. I forgot to change the width of the rabbit to account for a half inch board versus a three quarter inch board. But uh, I guess I'll just end up either having to use a three quarter inch board or just inserting the back wall a little bit farther than intended. So now I need to go ahead and cut those dados in the walls of the cabinet that will house the shelf divider. So that looks pretty good. I do need to trim the shelf dividers down a little bit in width. That way that backboard can fit in there flush and it'll just sit flush against these shelves. So once I trim it down, it'll be in there sort of like that. So now we need to create the compartment that will hold the sharpening disc for the work sharp system. And I'm going to cut some dados in the sidewall here and also some dados in the internal uh, vertical divider, as you can see here, to hold those sharpening discs. We're going to do that on the router table. I took my eye off that router bit for just a split second and I looked at the camera. Be super careful with these high powered routers guys. They can be pretty dangerous. So I've been pushing the router fence farther and farther from the router bit each time that I cut one of these dados. But now I've ran out of real estate on my router table. So now that I ran out of room on the router table, I'm gonna cut these final two dados on each board using the table saw sled. So last night I finished up the dados that will hold the sanding disc. I've got the internal divider that has the dados that match the dados on the side of the cabinet. So now I need to cut a dado in the top and in the middle shelf here that will hold this internal divider in like that. And then there will be some 
small dividers here or shelf dividers that will hold the sanding disc. So here is one of the glass sanding discs that has a strop on it and it'll sit in there like that on those shelf dividers. So I need to make sure I've got enough room for these to, to go in easily and be easily removed. Okay, I've got my dimensions picked, I've got my boards marked out, and I've got my router table set, so let's go ahead and cut these boards. I'm really amazed at how much work it is to create the sort of framework for a cabinet like this. And it's also really amazing how much wood it takes. This is a lot of plywood to build this small cabinet. One thing that I'm learning from building this cabinet is it would be a lot easier uh, to cut all this plywood if you had a big cabinet grade table saw. But no more than I do, this, the uh, DeWalt that I have is certainly adequate. So I think now I'm to the point where I can go ahead and break it down and lightly sand it, get all the rough edges off of it and the splinters and then glue up the, the carcass of the cabinet and then we can move on to some of the finishing touches. This is the back side. I've already got the plywood cut to go on the back side of the cabinet. I'm going to leave it off for now. I'm not going to glue it on initially. Uh, I need to make sure that I can get the drawer runners screwed into the walls of the cabinet before I attach it. So while you watch the cabinet glue up in 20 times speed, this is a good time to introduce today's sponsor. WorkSharp is a member of the Derex family business that began in 1973. In fact, Derex is a fourth generation family owned business based in Ashland, Oregon. The WorkSharp 3000 is designed to sharpen chisel irons, plane irons, and turning tools using an adhesive backed abrasive mounted to a spinning glass wheel. I was looking on Amazon this morning and the WorkSharp 3000 has 488 customer ratings with 4.4 out of 5 stars. Many of the reviewers mentioned it's easy to use and a great value for the money. So the cabinet glue has been drying for the last few days while I was working. So I just finished milling up some of this clear grain pine and I'm going to use this to veneer the outside of the cabinet to cover up that end grain. This was simply some scraps I had left over and I ran them to the table saw and cut them down to an inch in width. They're three quarter inch in thickness. Then I ran it through the planer just to smooth everything up. So now I'm just gonna go ahead and cut these pieces to lengthen the miter saw, glue and brad them to the face of the cabinet. It's gonna make it look really nice. So we're making really good progress. I took a little bit of pallet wood and planed it down and then glued it in position here to make the walls of the cabinet flush with the trim on the front side. That way when I put my drawer runners in, they will be flush with the trim and the side wall and I won't have to put any type of uh, shims or anything in there. So I'm ready to put in my drawer runners now. I'm gonna go ahead and attach those to the cabinet, take some measurements, and then go ahead and mill up the pieces for the drawers.
So to hold the WorkSharp 3000, I went with a pull-out platform that's essentially a drawer upside down. The WorkSharp will sit here and I can pull it out and use it while it's attached to the cabinet. So I've got the storage drawer in as well. So now that I've got the drawer completed and the platform completed, I can go ahead and mill up a face frame to go across the drawer and also across the platform to make it look really nice and also put a handle there. So for those drawer fronts, I'm gonna use this nice piece of clear grain pine. So last night I finished up adding the drawer fronts and this morning I'm going to go ahead and fill the nail holes and start sanding and preparing for finish. I'm going to use the uh, just the wood filler here, uh, Minwax uh, wood filler and then I'm going to use the Minwax wipe on poly for my finish. So I also need to add the back on as well. I've got that cut to fit. I may need to leave the back off just so I can do a little bit of sanding and also so I can get that poly on the back side of these shelves and things. Because once I add the back on, it's gonna be a little bit hard to get to that area. Okay guys, I've got two coats of poly and I sanded in between each coat. I went ahead and added the cleat to the back of the cabinet to hang it on the wall. I also put a spacer on the bottom because the cabinet needs to be spaced away from the wall equally as much as the cleat. I've got a drawer to store most of my sharpening accessories and I've also got this slot at the bottom to hold my diamond stones. I left enough room in front of the sharpening disc to hold my detergent. That's what I use when I'm sharpening on the stones. And then I've got a space for each one of my sharpening discs or wheels. So I've got a place for the work sharp and I can just pull the drawer out and um, use it and then put the drawer back in. I did put an LED underneath so it's a little bit easier to see you know, what I'm doing while I'm sharpening. Thanks for watching guys. If you enjoyed this project, I've got a whole playlist on French cleat uh, tool cabinets that I'd love for you to, to take a look at and I'll see you guys over there. Also, coming soon, I'm gonna show you how my new cabinet and work sharp system, how that's gonna change my workflow for sharpening my chisels and plane irons. So I'll be sure to show that soon on the channel.